we can use the autopsy tool, which is built into Kali Linux, to analyze captured image files, such as looking for deleted files or any files that could be incriminating or serve as evidence in a court of law. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go open up my folders on my local Linux machine. I've got a data one folder where I've got an image file called image one. I want to analyze this. This could have been captured using a number of different disk image acquisition tools. So it's about 1.1 gigabytes in size. As you might imagine, the larger the image file, the longer it takes to analyze it. So here in Kali Linux, I'm going to go to my menu and I'm going to go to the forensics section and I'm going to launch the autopsy tool, which is going to start a terminal window. I've got a web app here listening on localhost port 9999 slash autopsy. So I'm going to go into a web browser and I want to navigate to that location to get into the autopsy tool. So I'll specify localhost port 9999, that's the default listening port, slash autopsy. When I do that, I'm given the option to build a new case, and I'm going to call this case, case 40. Now the next thing I do is specify a description. Now a lot of this might be dictated by the entity that you were doing the case for, the details like the case number and the investigator name, so I'll add that information and click new case. Next thing I have to do is add a host that I plan on analyzing. So I'm going to click add host to do that. Now the host would be a suspect computer, for example, that has been seized for evidence gathering. So I'm going to put in a name here, let's say laptop 40. And the description will be suspect Dell laptop. You can also specify a time zone. So we have a relative time item to measure date and timestamps against. I'm going to click Add Image now for that host. That's going to be the image I had previously. I'll click Add Image File, and I need to enter the location of that image file, starting with a leading slash to go to the root of the file system. So let's minimize this for a second. Let's go back into our Linux file system to the Data1 folder. There's the Image1 file. So I want to look at the details for it to get the path. I want to right-click on it, and I'm going to go into Properties, and here we go. The parent folder is slash media slash root slash data1. And of course, the file itself is called image1. So armed with that information, let's get back into Autopsy to tell it that that is the image that we want to add to our case. So back here in Autopsy, I'm going to put that into the location field for adding a new image. Now, it is an image of a disk partition, not an entire disk. So therefore, I'm going to select Partition, and I'm going to leave it on Symlink down below. I don't want to copy that file anywhere. I want to leave it where it is. I just want to link to it and use it here for analysis. So Symlink it is. I'll click Next. I can also generate a hash value for the image if it's not already been done. So I could choose Ignore if I already did have one. Now the hash value can be derived as an MD5 hash or a SHA-256 hash or whatever tool that you are using and its support for hashing algorithms. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the add button down at the bottom and it defaults here to be using an MD5 hashing algorithm and we've got the unique hash value. So that is always important and should be taken note of, written down or stored in a file somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so now we've got an image added to our case, image one. And it's from laptop 40 and case 40, as we see in the upper left. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure it is selected. And I'm going to click the Analyze button down below. Basically, I want to see what's on that file system. So I'll click the File Analysis button to start doing that. And from here, I've got a couple of root directory entries. But as I scroll down, I'm starting to see other entries I've got an item here, 2.jpg red, which implies that it was deleted. So that could be of interest when it comes to analyzing a suspect's hard drive or a partition of a drive. There are other files that are shown here, but they're showing up in blue color, which means that they have not been deleted. Now, there are plenty of tools for recovering deleted files. If I click here on a file that's not been deleted, we can see, in this case, a thumbnail. It's a picture of a hard drive. But what about the deleted entries like 2.jpg? 
Well, including using this tool, Autopsy, we can always save or export or recover that file for further analysis. Now, the reason that we might do this is because often suspects will delete key files that contain some kind of evidence against which allegations have been made. And so it's very important then for forensics analysts to keep an eye out for deleted entries. Bear in mind that these days, suspects might have files stored in a multitude of locations, including on storage arrays in the enterprise, or at home it might be on a network attached storage device or a removable USB drive that might be plugged in to a wireless router, on mobile phones devices, and of course, people can also store files in the cloud, whether at the enterprise or the personal level. And often what people will do is synchronize those cloud files with a local device like a tablet. So it's important to think about all these potential locations for evidence when it comes to analyzing disk entries.